Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the fifth game of the first World Championship match between Zuppertort and Steinitz. My question to you is what should Black play here? Steinitz had the black pieces. He's down 3-1 to one in the match. And there's a crucial move that should be standard to the experienced chess player. Uh, so Steinitz played the correct move at this point. This bishop on d7 is hampered by the pawns on e6, d5, and f5. And therefore, Steinitz found the move bishop to b5. Why is this a good move? Well, we're going to trade that bad bishop off. It's very simple. When you have a bad piece, you just want to trade it off. White moved the bishop away. Black played queen a6. White played g4. Black played g6. h3. Rook c7. Rook e1. Now a key point. What should black play here? At this point, Steinitz really botched up. Um, last move, this knight couldn't move because black would simply capture the rook behind it. So, like, he couldn't go knight f3 or knight f4 because the bishop takes f1. Now that he played rook e1, however, the knight is ready to move and therefore we must, we must capture on e2. Unfortunately for Steinitz, he didn't sense the urgency, and he made a serious positional mistake here. He played knight to g7, and after knight f4, this bishop remains bad, and he is in big trouble. This knight is very strong, right near the king, uh, and the, the end came swiftly, actually. <laughs> I was wrong. Last video I said that was like the last bad game for Steinitz. This one is another one, and he, he falls to a very big lead to start the match. Falls down um, to start the match. And white, black's pretty much defenseless. This bishop is not doing anything, and this knight on f4 is just totally dominant and can't be pushed away by any pawns. Brings his other rook to the open file. Knight e7, queen f2, queen to e8, and now try to find the finale that white found here, the finishing blow, after which uh, Steinitz resigned. Yeah, white found the move, rook takes g7. And after rook takes rook, rook takes rook, king takes rook, knight takes e6 check. I mean, Steinitz loved to attack, and when you gave him an attacking chances, he would he would latch on to it. I mean, I would say, I know I estimated Steinitz's strength earlier in the video as something around 2250 to 2300. Probably, I think under 2300, honestly. Um, but not not much. I mean, he did have some de some pretty strong understanding of, of key strategical ideas. Although failing to capture an e6 this game was a big mistake. Uh, Zuckertort, on the other hand, I would say his strength was around 2200 uh, fide. I mean, he had some clear weaknesses with when it came to positional understanding, but he was a good attacker. Um, so thank you for watching. And now Zuckertort is up to four to one in this match. He really easily could have been world champion. Um, four to one's a serious, serious thing, and the entire course of chess history would have changed if Zuppertort was world champion. I mean, honestly, almost nobody really knows who he is or what he's all about. But if he won this match, he would have been extremely famous. And he's up four to one. What more could you ask for? Uh, the next video is we're going to see how Steinitz comes back in this match. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.